welcome to another edition of From the Other Sideline. I am your host, as always, Melissa Treepwasser for Frogs Today, joined by, uh, this one is really special for me guys because this is a, a local kid made good situation. Uh, JT O'Sullivan from the quarterback school, uh, star in Northern California high school uh, football back in the day. I won't say when, I won't age either of us. Uh, we were contemporaries in high school um, as he was, he was starring uh, down the road. Uh, from my hometown, watched him all throughout his high school career and onto a long um, and very successful collegiate and professional career. So a guy that knows what he's talking about when it comes to quarterbacks. So I thought with the uh, NB- NFL Combine happening right now, who better to talk to uh, about Max Duggan and his pro future than the illustrious J.P. O'Sullivan. J.P., thank you so much for for joining me today. Wow, Melissa, that was quite the introduction. I don't know if I believe half of that stuff, but it was it was definitely uh, quite a football ride. So I've I've enjoyed it, and it's uh, it's fun to talk a little uh, Sacto back in the day. Yeah, I mean, I think you could call yourself a Northern California legend. I mean, college here at UC Davis, spent some time with the 49ers. Um, and like I said, what one of and this is before social media, before the internet, before all those things. People just showed up to watch you play football on Friday nights, um, and I think that's kind of a it's a, a very different world without all the hype and, and the bluster that kind of goes out with these guys. Now you you carved a path out of a a good program in the Sacramento area and and made quite a career for yourself both in football and then kind of on the other side of football too. Well, I appreciate that. I definitely don't believe that at the high school level. There were many, many people in our area that were better high school football players than I was, and even better quarterbacks. But it was something that has definitely. Uh, Gave me an opportunity at the collegiate level and uh, certainly had a great experience at Davis. And then that just kept on playing. And now I'm kind of doing whatever comes next. But it's one of those things that's fun for me. This game gave me so much. It really gave me a head start in life. And so to still be connected on any level is a lot of fun for me. Well, I think that that you are such a great person to talk about Max Duggan and to break down his game because a lot of what you did, like you said, is you kind of just carved your own path. And, and while maybe you weren't ha- didn't have all the the accolades and the illustrious and the big numbers and everything, you stayed in football for a really, really long time. I mean, you were a part of the NFL for a long time and maybe not a conventional path, but you got there and you stuck around. And I think that's kind of what a lot of people look at for Max Duggan is he's not going to probably wild people at the combine. He's not going to be one of those guys that you watch throw in a, you know, a, a two on zero situation and think, oh, this guy could make all the throws, but he's a guy that just finds ways to win. And we saw that, especially this past year for TCU, as you broke him down on, on film for your, the quarterback school uh, YouTube channel, what were some of the things that stood out? And did you see maybe any parallels to kind of the way that you approach the game, both physically and mentally from your time uh, back when you you were in his position? Oh, I think you're being a little bit too kind to my, my game, but his game, focusing on his game, he, you know, I think the thing that resonates and jumps off the film for me watching Max Duggan is he's, he seemed like he had a capacity to elevate his teammates. And I think it was contagious. And you can see it in the film when he, you know, runs the ball and he runs hard and he plays hard. And I think they also, you couple that with the perimeter weapon that they had in Johnson and this ability to create big plays and just kind of the new vibe that was seemed to be going on with TCU this year. And you win a little bit and it becomes this kind of snowball effect. And it was fun to see them take advantage of those moments and rise to those moments. I thought is a big indicator on someone who could potentially have success in the league. Now, you know, when you look across the landscape of draft eligible guys where Duggan kind of slots in there is certainly kind of, you know, to be debated. But I think as far as just kind of honoring what he did in college and the way he was able to do it and really fight through some adversity a number of times, but even so, you know, soon as early on in this year to be able to battle for your spot and be ready to take that moment when it comes. I think those are really great signs for someone who's got the resiliency to potentially stick on and and make this thing a, a career in the NFL. Now, so many things will go into that and most of them are luck and that's the bummer part about it. But the reality is, is he's shown that he's got that resiliency, that ability to rise to the occasion, elevate his team. So many variables that NFL executives and coaches look for. 
you know, we hear a lot about the variables, the off the field stuff, the, the ability to make the guys around you better. And, and obviously those, I think, are all attributes that Max Duggan possesses. Um, but he's a guy who, who played four years, was basically a four-year starter at TCU, and not many people were talking about having any type of professional future until that senior year. How much of those intangibles can kind of make up for three years of so-so statistics, so-so film, um, and, and have a GM look at him and say, we're, gonna, we're willing to kind of accept what happened in the past is that was a different TCU football program. We like the, the makeup of this guy, the mock-up the guy. We think we can, he, he can be a developmental quarterback in our system. Well, I mean, it, it only takes one. That's the beautiful thing about it. And, then it. and then it's kind of up to you and up to your opportunity. But, but the reality is, is that you know, probably before this year, not very many people would have said there's a great opportunity. And I'm not talking about because of how Max Duggan played this year. I'm talking really about Brock Purdy and the ability to look at someone's career and kind of be like, you know, uh, maybe he didn't necessarily show. I think the easy thing that people look at is kind of continuous improvement. And so if you're improving every year, you're like, oh, okay, we can capitalize on this trajectory. But if you have kind of these crazy ups and downs and you're real sporadic, it's tough to kind of pinpoint and say, oh, yeah, this is going to translate to Sundays consistently. And so if you look at the trajectory of improvement towards the end, I, I think that there you can make that argument. And I think you can make the argument easier now with that kind of you know recency bias of what Purdy was able to do in a perfect situation with a really good team and all those types of things that you could see you know if I squint I could see some of the same types of characteristics potentially you know get there now I think you know when you start really looking at the film you know I'm going to start saying things that you probably and the TCU crew probably don't necessarily maybe love or agree with but I think that the film shows that there are a number of inconsistencies, things that are going to be really hard to translate to Sunday. And it doesn't mean that he can't. And I'm certainly not going to be the person that put the bookends on his career and says, hey, this is not going to work on the league. He's just going to have to be some really significant improvement, mostly with his consistency of his ball control, his accuracy, and his ability to play the position from within the pocket. Yeah, and I, th I think that's actually super fair. And any TC fan that's paid attention knows what they're talking about, understands that Max Duggan has an uphill battle to make it at the next level because of some of the inconsistencies in his game. And, and just he doesn't, he's not a kid that has that raw talent that you like a Patrick Mahomes, who had a very, you know, average career in college when it comes to winning and what he was able to do with the guys around him. But you could see from the minute he stepped on the field that he had a special athletic skill set, a special quarterback mind. Um, but but for Max, without giving away all of the things, we want to send people to watch your incredible breakdown on YouTube. Oh, but them all away. <laughs> what um, you know, what what do you think is kind of the biggest hurdle just from a like the physical act of being a quarterback in the NFL? What is his biggest hurdle to being able to make it make that jump to the next level? Well, I, unfortunately, there are probably many things and it's not necessarily a one fix thing. I think, you know, when you turn on his film, I would love to see when I'm thinking about improvement. And you correct me if I'm wrong, but is he working with Jordan Palmer? I don't know who he's working yeah, with for so. draft eligible. So I Jordan will be it, all yeah. Jordan will be all over this, uh, but it will be uh, polish usually from the ground up. So footwork wise, much more consistent, much more uh, consistent in his ability to generate power and torque to be able to put the ball where he wants. So it's easy to say, hey, we got to work on our accuracy or we got to get better with our ball control. Well, how do we do that? And so the ability to be more consistent with your base, with your ability to generate force where you want to, when you want to, on time, in rhythm, those types of things that just aren't on the film. Now, they're not on the film. You got to kind of peel apart why. Is it because of the system that he's being asked to use or play within, or is that just how he plays? And it's usually a little bit of both, but that's the first part. The other part that's going to be a little bit harder is just you turn on the film and there are some throws where he just runs at a club. You know, he just doesn't have the arm strength to drive the ball where he wants to. Uh, you know, I just recently watched, before I hopped on with you, I watched the Baylor film from this past year, kind of remembering the end of that game, but not really remembering yeah. the meats of like the meat and potatoes of that game. And there are a couple of throws where you're like, oh, there are massive plays to be made. And we just don't, we, we just run at a club. And so those types of things, when you know, NFL guys are going to be like, hey, you know, we can, you know, we, we got to have the ability to drive the ball down the field like that to certain situations. And so I'm always thinking those types of things where, you know, I don't necessarily, you can work on all of those things. And I do think you can improve your arm strength, but can you get an extra 10 yards on a post throw, you know, when you got to have it, you know, 
I don't know, you know, we'll, we'll see. Those are, those are types where you run up to barriers to just your, you know, your makeup. It's, it's so interesting the way the NFL does evaluations because so much of that is kind of the toolsy stuff, right? The cannon for the arm, the, the speed when you can, you know, if you're going to be more of a dual threat or running quarterback, the speed that you can get around the edge, a special skill set there. Um, but, but you do see a lot of those like high character guys go in the late round. I mean, Brock Purdy had all of the tools, but didn't necessarily have the consistency. You've seen other guys that become undrafted uh, free agents that maybe stick on practice squads or teams. Um, if he's able to show that he has improved, do you think that that gives him a solid shot to get drafted or is he somebody that's going to have to do it the hard way? You know, I honestly haven't paid enough attention to like what the later round kind of looks like, but I, I always think if you, he certainly has done enough to garner a great opportunity to stick on a roster. I, you know, I, I think that that, that is a for sure thing now. If he gets drafted or is he a undrafted free agent guy? Sometimes I think it's actually better to be an undrafted free agent guy. You know, once you get to a certain point, I was a six round guy and it, you know, there's always something nice to say, Hey, you got drafted, but to making sure when you're in once you're beyond like a, a really early pick, it really matters where you go and you got to have somebody believing in you. And basically any, anytime you're with an organization, someone believes in you. It's just a big difference when that someone is the GM head coach or when that someone is the regional area scout, you know, and they just need an arm in camp. That's, you know, and you don't know, you know, you, you try to yeah. get a feel through your agent, through, you know, whatever you possibly can through these meetings at the combine, through these interviews. Do you have a, can you build a relationship with some of these guys? Do you know some of these coaches? Do your coaches know some of these coaches? So much of, you know, I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but so much of these coaching staffs are all inbred nepotism where you, they all know each other. They all really communicate. And so if they're interested, they're going to peel back the layers and figure out exactly what type, who are, who are you? And so you can get an idea, but you have to be in the right situation. And then when you're in that right situation with the right organization, you have to get lucky. You have to get an opportunity to play. You know, all those types of things have to go your way. And when you get those opportunities, say you only get five passes in the preseason, you better be locked in. And I mean, you better, you know, it's that's your time to shine. And that's just the reality of what it takes to stick and play in the league for a long time. And he certainly can, but he probably fits this kind of tier where there are a lot of guys, not not a lot of guys, more guys than there are at the top of the draft who will get guaranteed opportunities. You know, you got one or two guys that will get guaranteed opportunities where everybody else is kind of, well, I hope I go to a really good organization that wants to develop me, that has the capacity to develop me. And then the worst part, say you go somewhere that they do great, they win. Well, then all those coaches are gone, you know, and now you're scrambling yeah. for another. So it's just a, but it's the same way that it is in college with the transfer portal and anything like that. And he's certainly shown that he can, you know, kind of be resilient through a coaching change and a different staff and all those types of things that will, in my opinion, serve you well in the league because that that is constant, the change with who's coaching you, who's calling plays. You know, the only consistent is, thing is how you go about your kind of role and job as a quarterback. Well, Max got the benefit of a, a coaching change and a system change that helped elevate his profile. You can look at Brock Purdy landing in the absolute perfect spot, like you said earlier. You can look at a guy like Geno Smith, who was considered a bust, but stuck around until he got to a place where a coach believed in him or made him feel like he believed in him. And it's going to make a lot of money because of that season that he put together. So yeah, I think it, it is all about fit. Um, what are until they, dra you... they draft someone this year? Til yeah. Until they <laughs> draft somebody else. And then, yeah, I mean, at, at least, well, Hey, if he gets, as long as he gets paid, right. Like, yeah, pass that go. check, you know, we'll, we'll help, we'll help get yours. Uh, what are some of the things that you look at on film with what Max is the quarterback that you think these are translatable skills and, and these are the things that, that might give him that opportunity to have a professional career. Well, I mean, I, I honestly, when you turn on the film, I'm not sure that there are a whole lot of physical traits that say, yeah, we're, you know, he's for sure going to get that or that's going to happen. I think that he does make some throws into some, what I would consider like NFL windows mm -hmm. with some, you know, with some good accuracy on time in rhythm. It's just not consistent. And again, you know, is that the air raidy vibe? Is that how he plays? You know, it's hard for me to say. A perfect example is kind of to flip it for me is to say, when you watch Duggan play, he can run the ball. Like they they use mm -hmm. him to run the ball. And he's a good college runner. There are a lot of quarterbacks who are good college runners. But when you go from being a good college quarterback runner to being in the league where everyone is faster than you, everyone is probably bigger than you, 
you're probably not going to run like that. Like, and you, and the way that he runs, he runs with what I would consider like a tough guy edge where he's like trying mm-hmm. to run through people, you know, he's straight army people. He's got bloody elbows. Like he's got this like tough guy persona, which is fun and cool. And like, you know, I respect it, but it doesn't necessarily jive with the Sunday game. You know, the guys you think, or the least the guys that I think of that run the rock on Sundays that play quarterback are literally the freaks of freaks. Mm-hmm. Like they are crazy athletes. And so it's not that he's a bad athlete. He's a great athlete. I mean, he is, but that's the difference between Saturday and Sunday. And so can he mold his game and kind of keep that ability to run when he can, but protect himself? Can he make plays outside the pocket, maybe a little bit less runny and more extend plays and use his vision to create down the field, which probably would translate a little bit better than saying, uh, it's not, you know, it's not there. I'm going to go get it myself and run through three tackles. And you know that you're just not going to survive a 17 game season like that. And so, you know, I I think it's going to be how he molds and shifts his strengths, whatever that is, as he elevates all elements of his ability to throw with consistency to be able to say, and hang on, you know, I think that the thing that will give him the opportunity to do it is all the off the field stuff that everybody loves. You know, yeah. I, th- those things will get you in the building. They'll get you like, they'll get you on the practice squad. They'll get you opportunities, but eventually you got to play and eventually you got to play at a high level. And so can he do all those things as he's continued to improve to play at a high level when he gets that opportunity? I'd love to hear your thoughts a little bit on kind of the top of this quarterback draft class, because I think it is one of the hardest to evaluate that I've seen um, that you have guys that, that look like they've done some really great things that look like these freak athletes that can make all the throws but it feels like every single top quarterback has a question mark you know when you look at Bryce Young CJ Stroud Anthony Richardson will leave this like I think all of them have kind of a big knock against them who do you look at as the top guy in this class and is there somebody's career that you're going to be really interested to see develop especially because of how they might have to overcome either height or rawness or whatever other thing is kind of lacking from that perfect checkbox yeah I mean I think it's a an interesting class, I think is the way that I would frame it. Uh, I I personally really love watching Bryce Young play. I think, mm-hmm. you know, when you look at the body of work that he put out at the collegiate level, I think it's by far the best of this class and expect him to be a really good NFL quarterback. You know, at the same time, I have the same concerns as everyone has, you know, it's a violent game. And even though he's not necessarily, I'm less worried about the height and more just the size, mm-hmm. you know, just from anecdotally when I played, I remember feeling like I was getting thrown around, like I felt light and I weighed a lot more than Bryce Young weighs. <laughs> and so not that we have the same game, you know, he certainly got much better <laughs> movement skills and, but his, he does have this like slipperiness and pocket awareness movement that, you know, if you get dinged up or, you know, who knows what happens health wise to anybody, yeah. but you know, you, you just, the size of taking that pounding, you know, probably is the most concerning thing to me, but I think he does have a natural ability, almost like Patrick Mahomes. I don't love the comparison to Patrick Mahomes ever in anything, but he does have this kind of like uh, fast enough movements where he never quite gets hit hard. And he's kind of always, everything is glancing and he's got this great body control. And so I'm probably most excited to see Bryce Young. I hope he ends up in an organization that gives him an opportunity to develop and surround him by talent. The problem is, is that when you get drafted, you know, congratulations, you're the best player. You go to the worst team, you know, it's just, and it's, and it might be a little different for him when we see what all shakes out at the top of the draft as far as who he goes to. But, you know, you just hope he goes to a, a, you know, a staff that will develop him, an offensive staff that has the capacity to develop him and, and put him in a situation to thrive. Well, uh, and an the, owner that's going to give them some some space, give a coaching staff some space to to understand that you're bad and you're going to be bad for a couple of years until you can develop more of these guys around your top quarterback prospect. Yeah, and and that's the other thing that comes into so many of these things that you don't. You're everyone's a little naive when they come into the league thinking that you know they're just going to go you know get their career, get their Super Bowls, get their thing. Where so much of these organizations are top down driven, and so going to great ownership is just luck. You know, it's yeah. just luck and it really is. And, and especially in the draft. And so, you know, you, you, you hope the best there from, from there, I probably think CJ Stroud is, is the next guy who shows, you know, that kind of, as much as you could possibly say that Sunday type quarterback potential consistency. I think he certainly elevated himself at the end of the season, being able to, to move around a little bit more and create on his own to kind of, kind of elevate his entire game and package for what people think about him. 
so I'm probably those two guys are at the top of the class. I'm probably most interested, like everybody who watches quarterbacks and what happens to Anthony Richardson. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think it's just a it's a fascinating thing that anybody who tells you they know for sure is just straight up lying because there just isn't enough film coming from a guy who enjoys watching film from that regard. When you turn it on, there are crazy splash plays. There's ridiculous talent with his feet, with his legs, with his vision, with his arm. And then there are other plays where you're like, this looks, this is terrible. Like this is can't happen. And so, you know, I, I think it, a lot will depend on where he ends up, all those situations, you know, everything will depend on where these guys end up. Uh, it's, it's amazing how Josh Allen has kind of become the poster child for, you know, despite you can look at years and years of guys that had that looked the part and, and don't develop because they didn't have enough experience. And then Josh Allen comes in and proves everything wrong that you're supposed to do. Right. Like as he gets more accurate from the time he's in college, he does all of those things. It feels like he's kind of flipped that back on its head to, to make teams want to take chances on these, you know, perfect looking quarterbacks, even if they haven't necessarily had the opportunity to show they can do it on a Saturday or a Sunday. Yeah, and that, and I mean, it's always a bizarre situation when you use an outlier as an anecdotal experience about like, oh, this is how we're going to improve. But the reality is when you pull out the tail of all these things, like all these cats are outliers. They're all yeah. the freaks of freaks. But when you separate yourself like Anthony Richardson can athletically and trait wise, you know, it just makes you, you know, and all these guys, all these coaches, no offense to these guys, I'm friends with some of them. They, you know, they all have massive egos and think that they can sure. coach it out of them, you know, right? Like they get paid to coach too. And so it's, uh, it's just about making sure that I'll, I'll be fascinated to see where, where he goes, what he looks like early on. And again, you know, that kind of, I always think of it as this trajectory of improvement. So if he kind of like a similar, uh, a good kind of comparison would be Malik Willis this past year. Mm -hmm. A lot of people were high on Malik Willis, maybe not as high as Anthony Richardson, but this like come out of nowhere for a lot of people, flash athletic talent, but he gets an opportunity to play and it, it doesn't look good. Like it doesn't look good at all. And so now you're not on that trajectory. Your trajectory is a decline and you only played one year, you know, yeah. or, you know, you, the, the window for that kind of improvement is, or the opportunity to improve is tighter and tighter as these careers from these coaches are tighter and tighter. But the the thing about the Josh Allen thing that always gets me that I don't think people quite realize unless you see him a lot, and I don't necessarily see him a lot, but see him enough, is he is really a unicorn of unicorns. Like mm -hmm. he is a massive human being. He's huge. But he also is one of the best athletes on the field, which just doesn't happen. And it's not like he hurdled a dude this year, yeah, I mean, like flat out clean hurdled a guy. Like he, he's and, like six seven and he did that. What that makes it look easy. And, yeah. and it's just a, it's just a, those types of things I think are hard to wrap your mind around when you, you know, when you're a fan of the team and you just want, yeah. we got to solve our quarterback issue. Well, yeah, we all got to solve our quarterback issue, but there's aren't a whole lot of unicorns walking around that will fall yeah. into our lap as an organization, which is tough. Yeah. I feel like he's one of those guys that the best thing that would happen to him would be to slip a little bit in the draft and not have to be a day one starter because he's clearly not going to be ready to be a day one. Um, you know, you look at the, the trajectories of Alex Smith and, in uh, uh, Aaron Rodgers and obviously very different quarterbacks that very different skill sets too but you know Rodgers sitting behind a, a good great quarterback and a good coaching staff for a few years probably gave him a better shot to succeed out of the gate he was already super talented whereas Alex Smith was the number one overall pick that had to start day one on what was a very very bad team and it certainly set him back probably a couple of years in his development um, thankfully he he was able to kind of overcome that and with a change of scenery but yeah I mean it's it, it so much depends on on who the guy at the top is and, and who the guys below him how much string they have in order to to give guys chances to develop in their system over the course of not just one season but but several um and I know you're still kind of going through the evaluation process but is there a guy that, that that's kind of stuck out that maybe people aren't talking about that you look at and say I think this this kid's really got a shot to to be an NFL quarterback I mean there are certainly guys that I'm pulling for always kind of the lower quote unquote like uh, lower round guys a guy uh, for example would be a guy like Hendon Hooker so someone mm -hmm. who, you know, a lot of people on the national landscape probably didn't know a whole lot about before this year has comes out, has a great year. And then you add this injury element to yeah. it. So now you're fighting a different level of adversity. You know, you're not able to go through the, the traditional kind of transition to the league draft process. And so what that looks like, you know, where you're able to develop, where you are physically, you know, so much of this. And I know I, I've said it already, but this time of year, I always think of, man, so much of this is luck. I mean, just your health, 
your ability, you obviously have to take care of yourself and there's, you know, everything is at its absolute best right now for a lot of these guys as they come out of the combine into their pro day, into the draft. But, it, and the, the other part about it for me is this is a really long process for these guys. Mm -hmm. So they go from playing their year to into the draft process, to enter their rookie year, to playing more games. So it's a, it's a really, it's a, it's just a grind that you don't ever really experience again. Uh, of kind of 18 months plus of football. And so the the health element of it really plays a big factor for me. So you just wish these guys to be healthy. And then I want to see them. I want to see what it looks like because that Tennessee offense to me is one of those things that I really like watching. I don't necessarily like it, but I like yeah. watching it if it makes sense. Like I, it yeah. doesn't make sense to me necessarily. Well, it makes sense to me on college football field, but it doesn't necessarily give me a lot of video evidence of someone who will do the same type of stuff on Sundays. So it makes that comparison or projection harder for me in my mind. Not that he can't do it. It just looks different. Like the way that they play, yeah. the spacing, the way that they use, you know, that vertical choice option in their passing game is just different. You can't do that in the league because you don't have forever to throw. And so, you know, guys like that where I'm always like, oh, this would be a fascinating to see how he ends up because he's got the medical, because he's got the unique offense, because he came on a splash, you know, year, those types of things where you're pulling for guys like that. And the last thing I kind of want to ask you about is, you know, we're, we'll have this up as the combine is kind of hitting full speed, but the pro days will be coming around too. Uh, everybody gets really excited about those things. It feels like they're more for fans than they are for anybody at this point. But is there anything that, that fans can be watching or, or people that want to know and understand football better that they can watch where they can say, oh, this is a really key evaluator. Or if you see this, then you can think this. Like, can you glean any actual information from those types of events? I mean, I, I would answer that two different ways. I would say, yes, you can definitely glean important facts and, and, and interesting things that will, people will use in their draft evaluation. They probably just aren't videoed for you on TV. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> much of that. And it's and it's one of those things where everybody they're always like, well, the interviews are so important. Yeah. Yeah, the interviews are important. There's very few. I can remember sitting in like a round table of – NFL head coaches sitting down and you kind of like bounce around like an awkward, like dating thing and ju them just firing questions at you. And, you know, and I had all sorts of issues that they were asking me about, but I just remember being overwhelmed. Like, Oh my God, that's John Gruden. That's Bill Parcells. You know, that's Bill Belichick. Like they're all at the same table wow. asking you questions and you, you can't prepare for that. No one can prepare wow. for that. Yeah. And so then you go to, you know, interviews in their suite and that, you know, them grilling you on different questions. The it's, you know, it's, it, I remember just being absolutely drained. I don't think people realize how not physically draining it is. It's physically draining because you go there, test, you put in all this work, but you're confident. I would, at least, and most guys are confident in that part of it. That's what they've always done. It's the kind of emotional intelligence that has to go into being able to be in these constant job interviews. Cause you haven't, you know, at that time of your life, you haven't interviewed a whole lot for jobs like that. It's just a different level of intensity. Now, the parts that I really liked that were super stimulating were talking ball with all these people. You know, they would ask you, what's your favorite play? How do you block this? How do you understand protections? What's your, say it's third and 10, what's your favorite concept to call? Because they want to see what you know and see how you communicate, see how you interact with, you know, a staff being able to be coachable, those types of things that that's the like the stuff that gives me my energy and that I really enjoyed. But I could see if you didn't know ball, if you weren't confident in your understanding, uh, that would be, it would be unsettling very quickly. Yeah. If you're Marvin Mims and you're sitting there saying, I've never run a professional route tree out. <laughs> Oof, that was, that was quite a quote to come out on day one. Definitely the biggest news. Um, uh, JT, where can people find your work? Where, where can they watch uh, the, the great work that you're doing, breaking down film and, and talking football? Uh, my central hub is YouTube, the quarterback school, but I, I'm, I'm kind of all over the place with the Patreon, with a bunch of courses and uh, a little bit on Twitter too. If you want to come at me sideways, that's probably the best way to do it. <laughs> that's the best way for everybody to do it, right? Go to social media, make yourself an egg avatar, call it a day. Uh, perfect. Really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Uh, appreciate all your, your insight on Max and, and just quarterbacks in general. We'll be following along this weekend and through the draft process and checking out what you have to say. Awesome. Thanks, Melissa.